Hi and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'll be talking about watching a movie after you've read the book for the first time. So this will not be a book review of this novel but I can tell you one thing and that is that this is a very very clear five star and I sort of knew that going in. Because I have actually watched the movie once before but that's a long time ago even before I knew who Fredrik Bachmann was. And I couldn't really remember details from the movie, so I thought I'd try reading the novel and then watching the movie again. I have been hesitant to do this because I just assumed that I would love the movie more, but this has been standing in my shelf for a long time, and I've read several of his other novels and I thought it was time that I read this one. Maybe the reason why I thought the movie was going to be better for me is that you can watch the movie in one sitting. It's very comfortable just sitting in your couch and letting your eyes and ears do the experience. You don't have to focus as much. And also everything's better with music or at least more enhanced with the right music. And so I thought that if I watch a movie where the music just hits you right, that will be better than reading any kind of book. Thus leading me to believe that if I've watched a movie before, there's no point in reading the novel. But I was wrong. Before I started watching, I hadn't decided if I was going to watch the American one or the Swedish one. Of course I'd seen the Swedish one before, so I thought I had to watch the American one. But luckily the American one wasn't yet published in Norway, so... I couldn't do that. I say luckily because I watched the Swedish version before and I enjoyed it. And also transferring a grumpy Swedish man to becoming Tom Hanks just seems like an impossible task to me. But maybe at some point I'll watch the American version as well. I think the first thing that has kept me from doing this before is that I'm a very plot driven reader and I've sort of been thinking that if I know the plot then why should I go through the plot twice? I know what's going to happen. But just as I started watching this movie again, I realized that I'm watching this movie again. So I felt kind of stupid sitting there and having thought that reading a novel twice will be silly because I know what's going to happen when I'm sitting here and watching the movie for the second time. Because I really wanted to watch the movie again. You might say that that was quite the epiphany and a very powerful one. The second thing I was very curious to see is how much of the inner dialogue is expressed in the movie. Of course a movie is great at showing you pictures and what's on the outside, but it's not easy to express the inner dialogue on the outside when making a movie. And one example that was very clear to me is early in the movie Ove decides to hang himself. But before he does that, he takes a picture of Sonia and turns her away to look outside. And for us that watch the movie, we can sort of see that, well, he does this to either not look at her or for her not to look at him. But in the book, it's quite explained why he does it and how he thinks about it when he does it. And it was very apparent to me that here is something that movies can't really do. And I was very happy to see that already in the start of the movie something was lacking. This is of course just one example, there are many others, but it shows you how difficult it is to take all the things from the book and move them over to a movie. And all of these small moments of inner dialogue and explanation is something that makes the book so great. Another thing that made this book great is how mean Uwe is and the language he uses to express this. So he says a lot of things that aren't politically correct and aren't really allowed to say anymore. And this is all part of the fun and it just shows you what a character he is. But in the movie he does not use these words at all almost. And I actually wrote down when I read it like, I'll be interested to see if the movie keeps all these words because they're kind of offensive and they fit him so well. I actually kind of missed this in the movie and I wondered if this was a sensitivity thing or if it's just that they have other things to play with like sound design or angles or color correction. I don't know, but I sort of missed him being as outrageous as he was in the novel, especially with the language. Also the book is quite filled with quotes that are very quotable and I found it a bit strange that these weren't represented in the movie, especially because some of them are just mentioned a lot in the novel over and over again and I thought this was going to be something that might enhance the movie. If some of you have thoughts on why this is left out from the movie, please comment below in the comment section because I'm really curious to find out why. Something I in general struggle with when reading is when books have a lot of characters and I didn't really think of this before I watched the movie but the names of the characters aren't mentioned as much in movies as in books. 
for obvious reasons. But it's just one of those things that makes you relax when watching a movie. I never have to think about who is that person again, because I remember faces, I just never remember names. It's an obvious advantage for the movie. Now over to a big one and it's the missing scenes. So I grew up watching Harry Potter in the movies, whereas some kids actually read the books. And if it's one thing that the kids that read the books are great at, it's telling you what scenes are missing and how the scenes shouldn't be like this. And now I think I'm a little bit closer to understanding them. Take for example one early scene in the book that's foreshadowing something that's going to happen towards the end. And this is of course completely left out of the movie because when seeing that happening you sort of understand that this is happening in the future whereas in reading the book you can't really know. And this was actually one of the biggest experiences for me doing this project because I've never really thought about it. There are some things that you can write about but can't show on the screen because it reveals too much and it's no easy way of doing it. Another example is that in the novel Uwe talks about his wife as being alive but when watching the movie the first thing that happens is that he goes out buying flowers and put them on her grave. And this is just something that makes the novel so much more emotional and keeps the tension in a way. It's not all revealed at once. And I just liked how much more powerful it was reading the novel in that sense. Then there is a thing that I found to be a bit weird and that is the age of Uwe because both in the book and in the movie he is 59 years old but in the movie he looks like he is 70. And maybe it's a thing whereas if you're older you look even more grumpy. I watched the movie together with a friend and I asked him how old do you think he is and he said like about 70. And I totally agree, he looks a lot older than he actually is. Also looking at the previews from the US, Tom Hanks looks a lot younger. So if you have any thoughts on this, just comment below. Based on all of this, I felt like the book gave me more of an emotional connection with Ove. And also I spent a lot more time reading than watching, so that might be the obvious explanation. But there is a lot more to the novel than movie. It's more exaggerated and it has a lot more detail and it just makes you more invested. This being said, I actually laughed out loud a whole lot more when watching the movie rather than reading about him, but this book made me tear up more than when watching the movie. Maybe that's just a choice from the director of the movie that it wanted it to be more fun than sad, but I doubt it because sadness is a powerful tool. And don't be fooled, I actually loved the movie as well, basically because it's a great story, but also the guy who plays Uwe is great. And the rest of the cast is varied, to put it in those terms, but all in all I do enjoy that movie. So this definitely won't be the last time where I read the novel after I've watched the movie. And if you have suggestions for great novels that have become great movies or the other way around if that exists, please comment below. And thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye!